damn it, Knuckles, you drank all the beer again. Grab a six pack, sit back, and prepare to laugh. It's the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Oh, well, that was creepy as hell. That, was that really fits, this. though. <laughs> yeah, don't do that again, though. Sorry. Don't, that was too good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very, very special edition of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. Uh, it's not only our 21st episode. Wait, 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 wait. Hopefully this catches. And it did. Crack myself up with a beer. All right. It is the 21st episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. So that means we're legal. Celebrate good times. Come on. Hooray. Yeah. Hooray. <laughs> uh, it's also our very special Halloween episode. So we're going to, this one's going to, we're going to talk about all of our favorite movies, games, horror movies, video games, villains, whatever. Um, but I'm not doing this alone this week, but first I guess I'm Ginger Boy, but I'm also joined by the, the usual cast of Jack of Hearts. Hey, yo, what's up, man? <laughs> and Knuckles. Insert bad ghost joke here. Okay, I'll do that. It's any joke Knuckles has ever told, ever. <laughs> okay, continuing with our normal thing when, when Ginger Boy hosts, I get no nothing from the guys as an introduction. <laughs> Uh, so I guess we can <laughs> go ahead and jump so in. True. We're not really going to talk. We're not really going to talk about what we've been playing. I guess this week, I I, I did pl- I did pick up Assassin's Creed Four uh, yesterday. When it just it just came out yesterday. I've unfortunately only got um a couple hours to play it. I've only, I've been trying not to play it because of uh our our me and Knuckles competition we got going on during Extra Life. We'll, talk, we'll touch on that more later. But uh, I guess we'll jump into. Our kind of first uh, Halloween topic of the week. Um, name some of your favorite horror villains in like movies or video games ever. We'll start with uh, Jack. Oh boy, this is gonna be a tough one. Well, I know from the very few like horror movies that I've seen and stuff. I think one of my favorite like uh, villains would have to be Freddy Krueger. Why the freaking Nightmare on Elm Street like movies? I remember watching those as like a little kid because you know what, my dad was not really the most responsible parent growing up. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, those guys scared the freaking hell out of me as a kid because, oh, oh man, if I sleep, Freddy Krueger's gonna get me my damn sleep. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> One, two, Freddy's coming for Three, you. Three, four, the, the... you must lock your doors. <laughs> Five, six, better stay up late. Was it like seven, eight, never sleep again, or was it nine, ten? Nine, oh, ten, never God. sleep again. Seven, what, what's seven, seven eight, eight better for... stay awake. Oh, I know. I really like. I do like the first movie and stuff. I didn't really particularly care about like. Uh, oh come on, Freddy man. versus Jason. I never even seen that movie. <laughs> That's a great movie. It's not really scary, but it's awesome. I actually own that on DVD. Oh, wow. That's a great freaking movie. I was joking, like, but uh, what? Bad. I kind of like that music video though. That's based on like Nightmare on Elm, Elm Street. I think it was like three or something like that. Dream Warriors, because you have that song by like that band Dawkin and stuff. That's kind of. Uh, Kind of cheesy though, but it's just it's that type of eighties cheesy type of thing that's just so f- fun just to listen to. <laughs> Dream Warriors. <laughs> uh, I remember so, this. I, remember no, this uh, I don't know if it was. I think it was Number on Elm Street, but this guy went into sleep. He tried to fight Freddy in his sleep. Yeah. He because uh, Dream Warrior reminded me of this. He uh, he tried to become a wizard in his sleep. And, like, uh, immediately got fucking stabbed by Freddy. I think that was the one where they're, like, in the mental ward. I don't know. Like, one of the guys gets sucked to the video game or something. Yeah, I have no idea because it, it was, was like, crazy. some fucking ridiculous shit. I haven't, I, I, I haven't seen the, some of the... I've only watched it the first it, maybe one or two in the last like, five years. I, I don't oh, there's also this black, one black guy that <laughs> fell asleep. 
And like his mom <laughs> scared him to death, but well, cleaning his ears scared him to death. And like he see this big <laughs> black woman come in and this giant ass Q tip. Oh my god. <laughs> it gets weird. After like two, can yeah. I just say it's like if you're if you know you're at a battle like Freddy Krueger or something like in your sleep and stuff like that, I think the fucking wizard would be the last thing you would he would probably do because that's one, oh, one, one of the he... unless you're Gandalf, <laughs> unless you're fucking Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking... No, why not be with someone with freaking armor? So why not be like a knight or like uh, I don't hey, know, why, like why, why don't you summon Kr- uh, Freddy Krueger to fight your Freddy Krueger? There we go. I'm gonna dream. Of my, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pretend I'm Freddy Krueger in a dream where I have to fight Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I think I got a chance in. Maybe. But um. Okay. So Knuckles, what about you? What's some of your favorite horror villains? Well, if some of y'all don't know, there's a show out there called Supernatural. Uh huh. And like in season five, which Great is thing. eh. But um. <laughs> season five is pretty good. I well, season five is okay. I'm just. Seven, eight, we're not. Eh. Six and seven pretty were bad. Eh. No, six was okay. I thought seven and eight were pretty. Eh. Eight, it's getting better eight. at eight, but well, the no, point was, the point I'm great. trying to make. Season five, uh, Lucifer comes to, but Mark Pellegrini, the guy, one of the idiots from Big Lebowski, and Jacob from Lost, he play he plays <laughs> Lucifer and does a great he plays a great job, and he's kind of bone chilling. Oh wow! I say that's pretty good. That's yeah, good. but also for a video game, uh, maybe. God, what is? God, what's that bitch from Ellen Wake? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like her yeah, but about, she's like, like the Nightmare Queen, some bullshit. Okay. Uh, and maybe horror movie, probably Pinhead. That's pretty good. Oh god. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks. Okay. <laughs> you wanna tell tell us about your flashbacks? Oh man. I'll tell you what, it just goes back to when like I was a little boy and stuff and whenever my mom would go to work and stuff like that with uh my dad constantly like flipping on like movies. I mean, I was constantly exposed to like freaking horror films or like like hardcore like like freaking action movie type of films from the eighties. And it's uh my dad would like purposely watch like movies sometimes just to freak me out. Something like Nightmare on Elm Street or like, uh, oh gosh, like oh, Puppet Master and like uh, Hellraiser. <laughs> oh, going back real quick, um, I, I was at this dollar store earlier because I had to get an extension cord cause for my for my room. Um, yeah, they had the complete Puppet Master collection for like eight bucks. Ugh. <laughs> I, pu- I thought it? part of me <laughs> wanted to buy it. Uh, but continue. Well, that's pretty much what I had to say. Pretty much about that. <laughs> pretty much about that. <laughs> but you know what? When you just brought up like a good point and stuff when it comes to uh, like that uh, video game type of thing, I I am just remembering. I'm just remembering like the first time that I had to. Uh, played Parasite Eve or something like that on the PS1, and uh, that uh, one main chick or something like that, that uh, with the whole mitochondria type of uh, crap, that that opera singer and stuff, or the first, you know, that's probably one of my favorite, like, uh, you know, horror type of villains and stuff, because the whole concept of Parasite Eve, it's it's like one of those niche type of Square Enix type of, uh, a, like, kind of like a survival horror RPG, where you're faced off against this, this, like, uh, mutated, like, opera singer, right, that, uh, instantly, once you meet her, she freaking just, uh, just, like, engulfs people in flames and stuff like that while she's on the stage and stuff like that, and all the freaking sewers are, like, during the cutscene are, like, just spewing blood or something from the damn thing. It was... Uh. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess I'll go on with my, uh, my favorite, some of my favorite yeah. villains. Uh, I, I gotta say, like, some of my horror, favorite horror villains is, uh, oh, God, uh, the main guy from Psycho, Nor- Norman? No, Norman that, Bates. No. Norman Bates. Norman Bates from Psycho? Yeah, it's Norman Bates. Uh, yeah. God, that movie scared the crap out of me when I was little. The original uh, one? Great movie. Yeah, the original one. No, no, not, yeah, not the one with Vince Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> God, not the remake. Oh, Ugh. Vince Vaughn scares me, but in the wrong reasons. 
Here's every Vince Vaughn movie ever. I'm incapable of falling in love. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. The end. Well, okay. Oh, the Lost World. He actually had a semi-different role. But. Highly unlikely. Um, no, I guess um, Norman Bates from the original Psycho was a, was a good one. Um, I guess going with video games, that's kind of a tough choice. It is, huh? <sighs> I, I, I don't know. I can't really think of, like, it's been so long. Like, uh... The, the the Resident Evil Four, the the main villain in that one, I can't think of his name. The little the little guy, the little guy in Resident Evil Four. Oh my God, what was his name? I'm gonna look it up. The little you guys little talk. guy in Resident Evil Four. Yeah, he had like creepy freaking Chucky also. Chucky, <laughs> Chucky's. Scary. When I was a kid, I used to. When I was three or four years old, man, I had like my parents gave me like a doll that had red hair, oh, and it was just like Chucky. Oh God, I'm I would, going further from I st- that. I, I, I um I actually took it. And I threw it into my toy box, and I just broke it underneath there, and I hid it underneath there because it scared the crap. Because I didn't want to come out. And not, no, like, <laughs> I got one. I'll talk to you on that. Uh, we and one of my friends, we were like leaving the movie theater. When we were like eight years old. Yeah. This little girl was carrying a Chucky doll into the movie theater. It was really? a straight up, like, fake, like sewn together Chucky doll. Yeah. I was like, that shit was scary as hell. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is wrong with her? <laughs> I have no idea, man. That's, that's oh, just kind of creepy. Either <laughs> one of you have seen the movie Mama? Which one? The movie Mama. Like, throw Mama from the train? or No. Like, the straight movie is, like, no. Mama. No. Like, uh, this... I've I've seen the movie. It's pretty recent. I think. Yeah, it's I've relatively it. I, recent. I just, but um, I, I've seen the the cover of it. I there's the well, um, basically, uh, this guy uh, kills his wife because uh, for something, and then she ta- he takes these two little girls into a cabin, and the whole premise of the movie is that uh, like once like he actually tries to kill the daughters, like in the cabin. But this, uh-huh. like, evil creature that was living there fucking, uh, like, just ripped him apart and, like, threw him, like, 800 feet. And it's like, holy shit, they're, they're, this bitch was creepy. <laughs> kind of like, it looked like a, uh, more realistic, or actual, like, real life, uh, Slender Man. Huh. And, um, to answer my question, it was Salvador. Oh. This main creepy. Is a little guy from uh, yeah, but um, no, I guess to go. So that I ever seen, yeah, Norman Bates and you know, like Salvador from Resident Evil Four. That guy was creepy. His voice and Chucky, hate all of those. So guys. who here was af- who's afraid of clowns? I am. I'm, I'm not really. So afraid. I don't it, like clowns. It petrified I you. I loved all. Ugh. Oh, Segu Segway or Segway. <laughs> Favorite horror movies. Knuckles it Go. It would be one of them. That was what I was going to say. It. Best horror movie ever. I completely forgot about that. It really? and, uh, what was that movie? With Jack the, Nicholson. The Thing. The oh, Shining Shiny. was good, That's too. also one of them. Yeah. I think The Thing, It, and, uh, The Shining would probably be my top three horror movies. Uh, you know what my favorite horror movie, I think, is? Which I'm not too sure if it really is classified as a horror movie. Pro- Back to Sluts 9. What? Back to our slots tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> not that kind of horror movie? Not that type of... Mm, not that type of horror <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay. No. Uh, Predator. Predator is <laughs> not really a horror movie. Yeah, it can, it can, it go can be going to a horror movie. movie. I mean, come on. The, the aspect of some, like, an alien creature or something like that just coming from the freaking forest, like, hunting you down. Ain't got time to bleed. <laughs> Taking out guys like Jesse the Body Ventura and like, uh, you know, going odds odds. Who's your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's you're talking about Kitten Garden, Kitten Garden Cop, right? <laughs> like predator in it. That's predator Two, isn't it? Isn't it Predator, predator Two, Kitten Garden Cop? Is that what it's called? No, 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 no. I think the second one had like Danny Glover or someone to lead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Danny. Oh, was not, now I'm thinking. Uh, Fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger survives the Brazilian desert or uh, the Brazi- uh, Brazilian forest, and he goes to become a detective and has to go undercover at the 
at the fucking uh, kindergarten. Dude, that would be awesome. <laughs> I, think, is it, I think kindergarten, or, or uh, Predator 3 was actually twins with Danny. Oh, shit. <laughs> he gives birth to a baby Predator, I think. <laughs> No, it goes in from uh, it goes from junior to twins. Oh, right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Predator Four is twins. All right, dang it. Uh, man. Oh man, make that movie, people. I want to see that Predators and the twin and Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I want to see a Predator jump out of Dan- like burst out of Danny DeVito, aliens, uh, xenomorph style. I don't, I don't want to see Predators or Aliens ever again. Either. No, not together. Just <laughs> Predator jumps out of the Danny DeVito alien style. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Or no, that's the end of Predator 3. It sets up Predator vs. Alien. He gives birth to an alien. Oh, yeah. Oh, what kind of great it is. I should be a movie writer. Oh, God. Movies. Like the freaking, uh, <laughs> the fly? I mean, God. Hmm. Not a good one. Because that, that kind of, you know, spoilers, I guess. But uh, that's kind of like the ending of, like, The Fly as well, you know? Like, with that lady having that freaking larva. <laughs> Danny DeVito's in The Fly? No. <laughs> I'm oh. just saying. The he ending the of that character. <laughs> he was The Fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Jeff Goldblum. You got to pay the troll toll to get into that boy's soul. <laughs> Sorry. That's a... That's a... Uh, no, always serious. Always funny and, reference. Was it? Always... Yeah, in Philadelphia. <laughs> Great show, by the way. <laughs> Danny DeVito does not enough stuff. That's that's the moral to this podcast. That's the whole point of this podcast. Oh, shit. Uh, we have to yeah. we have to bring back the penguin. <laughs> no, 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 that's all right. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess we can go into our favorite horror games now. We're flying through topics right now. This is crazy. All right, so I, I started with Jack the first time, then went to Knuckles the second time, so we'll go back to Jack again. Okay. Jack, favorite horror game. Go. Okay, favorite horror game. Wow! I'm all hyped up for some reason. I know you're hyped up pretty well here. My favorite horror game, even though it has a lot of action type of elements and stuff, was Resident Evil 4. Because, yes. you know what? Coming back from like uh, the previous horror games, like in the Resident Evil franchise and stuff, like the, the, the tank controls I could not never get used to. But when I first ran Resident Evil 4, and I got to that freaking village and stuff, and I had that dude chasing me with a chainsaw, for God's yeah. sakes, man. It's a... Oh, oh man, man, I hated that because I kept getting decapitated like on stuff. <laughs> There's very few games where I can like even years later I can vividly remember parts about like the games as the first time I played it, and that's one of them. That first time you the, you get bombarded yeah, by the, the mob. The first time you hear that chainsaw off in the, out in the distance is like oh shit that's coming for me. <laughs> or when like you you climb the they're, they're climbing the ladder into the window. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Oh, the part where you get locked in the house with the other guy. Oh, yeah. You freaking knock the guys, like, off the ladder and stuff. Yeah. And climb up to the roof like and do all that shit. Horde of zombies coming at you. Oh, man. That was awesome. Oh, that was. A- anything else kind of put on your, your favorite horror games? We-, we can do more than one. We can do a couple. Two or three. Oh, man. Um, It just really... Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what? I am not too sure if I've played that many type of horror games, to tell the honest truth. <laughs> But, yeah, that's just it. Like, Resident Evil 4, pretty much. That's a great one. What about you, Knuckles? Luigi Ma- Luigi's Mansion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, yeah. Joking. Uh, that's a good, it is a Nintendo, that's a it was a Nintendo game. Uh, Eternal it Darkness a, for uh, yes. GameCube. Yes, yep. I got that. Yeah, that was a good uh, one. That was uh, creepy as hell. And then the, there's a, a game called Hunter the Awakening or some shit like that. Right, I think I remember that. Hunted the, I think it's Hunted the Awakening. Or something. some shit like that. But the point is that you're playing it's like one out of four people. It was like Left for Dead pre Left for Dead, oh. and uh, one of the bosses in the fucking game is like, well, this little girl was carrying a uh, te- little teddy bear. Like yeah. you actually had to protect her to get to the to uh, till she got to the church. Well, right. she meets her parents at the church. So she drops the fucking teddy bear, runs, uh, hugs her parents. This like giant demon spirit possesses the teddy bear, and it becomes like eight feet tall. Dismembers the parents. Oh my god! Girl goes running off. 
and you're stuck having to fight the giant teddy bear in the church. Oh my god, man, that's crazy. Yes, that. Well, you know. Well, thank you for ridiculous. bringing up like. Uh, thank you for bringing up that game though, because it just reminded me of another game that I love to play and stuff that's horror related. It was Left for Dead. Freaking the first Left for Dead when I first played it for the Xbox 360. Uh... The first time that I would kept on getting bombarded with all these freaking like zombies, is I kept freaking the the hell out and stuff because it's like, oh god, what the hell is button in this? Oh god, the thing's on me with the tongue. Oh, all right, real, <laughs> real quick, that brings up a question for you, kind of new topic. Huh. Does monsters in video games make them a horror games? Um, I'd say so. Yes. Really. I mean, kind of like you know, Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, it's not really a scary movie. It's, it's a, yeah, I don't know. I would. I don't, I don't think it necessarily has to, it doesn't have to be like as long as there's something in there like a murderer things like that it's okay well, also it, Halo is a horror game I'm I'm fucking with you I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to get you angry oh no 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 no, no, no. But, um, like no like yeah. what uh, you know what I'm saying and stuff it's, it just all depends really upon how the game developers you know the story writers and stuff like, play out the stories, like, plot and stuff. Because, yeah, there there are monsters inside video games and stuff. This doesn't necessarily make it, a, like, a horror type of game, but the way that, uh, like, they kill something or the way that uh, they're presented, like, introduced to, like, say, for instance, Resident Evil 3, when you have to try to run away from Nemesis Fuck and stuff throughout that, that entire game. Oh, man. <laughs> Fuck that. And uh, the worst part about that, man, it's like, it's like you have this constant type of like loathing that you have this dude behind your back just willingly just willing just uh, take you out, man, with just like maybe one or two hits or something like that. If, and you if have I've to really the, if I brought this up on the podcast before, stop me ahead. Like Okay. I was five years old playing uh like my dad had bought me Resident Evil. Uh huh. And it's like first off, what fucking parent buys a five year old Resident Evil? Or, I, 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 no, well, it, it varies. It's like, what parent uh, buys a five-year-old a game called Resident Evil and has a picture <laughs> of a uh, zombie, zombie. With, it's ready no, with no gums and you just see like, t- like blood and teeth. And, uh... Man. Man. They buys a five-year-old that. Well, I pick it up, no problems. Like, okay, well... There's a, before the pause screen, there's this little cutscene, like, if you, uh, kept the pause menu up a little too long. And, uh, yeah. I did, before I even started playing it. And it has a picture of this man running and screaming down this hallway. And I think it was, I think it was, <laughs> um, the, like, the main, like, the guy you're looking for throughout the entire game. Yeah. But, uh... His running, him running and screaming in quasi live action, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god!" That was just the first opening scene. That was like the pre-game, and then you start up the game. He has a bunch of people running and screaming into a mansion, getting chased by dogs. It's just... Well, then you load up the game, pick a character or whatnot. Then you go, you search for one of your teammates, squad mates. You go, go through the kitchen, whatnot, and then open a door. Go through that door, go down the little hall, goes to another cutscene where this um, zombie is just devouring your t- squad mate, and then just slowly lifts its head up and slowly turns its head around at you. And the menacing music starts to play while you're trying to figure out. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Shoot it! Shoot it! <laughs> what do I, I do? Shoot it! Well, I'm also I'm also five year old, so <laughs> yeah. you can say that can be really fucking scary. But go ahead. It was like just a little uh, fun fact of a five year old scared knuckles. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good story. <laughs> okay, I, I guess I can talk about some of my favorite games. Yes, from, uh... you can. Uh, thank you. Thanks for permission, knuckles. Appreciate that. Um, no, I guess some uh, probably the scariest game ever uh, I've ever played is Resident Evil Six. <laughs> uh, I still have night. You still have nightmares about that game. About it. I, I still have nightmares every night from for purchasing that game. Curb stomping zombies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I guess uh, Resident Evil Four is, is one. 
Uh, we already kind of talked about that. Uh, another couple, another big ones, I guess. Um, everybody, I'm sure everybody knows about Dead Space one and two. Uh huh. It's that Dead Space and uh, Dead Space two especially. The entire it took me like a month to finish that game. Because even though I really enjoyed when I was playing the game, I it was I dreaded playing that game. Did you uh, have every the time I walked off, uh, hot mind undercover? Yeah, yeah, and just like every like. I didn't want to go in another well, room. They did model uh, their, just... the necromorphs off of a uh, car crash victim, so that might have something <laughs> to do with it. Well, no, it's just like you just you just the noise, the the, the music, the noise. The, they, they put everything they put about you in the zone for that. Like, yeah, the tone. Like, of the you game felt, is... I felt, I felt like I was. I can't remember the character, the main character's name. I think it's like David. Sounds about right. David's fine. We'll go with David. <laughs> um, you know a lot of Davids, but. Yeah, I know a lot of Davis too, but um. I said we. Oh, okay. I I was I I, I just saw you out, but um, no. I don't like every time every, every time I go in another room and like it, like there's like four or five second delay when you open the door. It's loading, but it just adds to the effect of like oh my god, what's gonna be in this room? And you just go in the room and it's like there's nothing there, or you might you might see something in the distance like crawling away real quick. And this, like, when you get to, like, the, um, the daycare center. Oh, shit. Of the ship and, the, oh, my God, the shit with the, the, the freaking little kids that are turned into them. Uh. Oh. oh, man. That, that, like, it took, it, it, it was, like, it's only, like, an eight-hour game. I think it took me, like, a month to finish that game just because I just, <laughs> I would, I'd play it for, like, an hour, and I wouldn't touch it again for, like, a week because I just didn't want to play it anymore because it was, it was, ugh. And um, you know, Dead Space One, obviously. I think that one. I think Dead Space One was probably a little scarier. In the fact that the ki- main character didn't talk. Main character didn't talk. You're in an abandoned spaceship. And you're by yourself. There's like literally, you didn't talk to anybody. Like, Dead Space Two and Three, you people talk to. Occasionally, uh, you got an intercom from somebody on the other ship, but. Yeah, but I mean, in Two and Three, you had someone to talk to pretty much throughout the game, and One you and Three, didn't, you had right? a person you right behind care- you the entire time. Yeah, Dead Space Three was still pretty good, but it, it, it kind of went more the like. Action. When Resident Evil 6 went, but Which, good. Where it was still action. Yeah, the thing is, like, the, there was another game that did that. Fear. Hmm. Yeah, Fear, Fear 3 kind of went more into the... Uh, Straight up action. Action adventure. Yeah, Fear 2 was was a really good one. Fear that's, was that's good, good too. I, I, like, oh, just the girl would randomly... Like, the, the, the ghost of the girl would just randomly God. pop up. Yeah, it's creepy that as was, hell. Yeah... So I would say those two are, um, those are pretty big ones. And you just with, with Dead Space though, when the char- when the main character didn't talk, and you didn't see his face or anything, you kind of felt like you were him, more because you, you were in like, that situation. Kind of felt, yeah, like the, I, you, I was more, I was more just in the game. And two, I knew I was, I was playing at this. It was a different. It was a character. You knew who he was. He talked. He had. He made his own decisions. Things like that. The kind. Of, I'm not I'm not trying to discount the game. It was fantastic. But I think, uh, as far as Dead Space, I think Dead Space was scary in that, in that way. Um, so those would be mine, I guess. Uh, yeah, like, and D from PlayStation. I don't know if you, nope. remember, you guys remember, remember that game at all. The original PlayStation? Nope. Which game now? Okay. D? D. Is it like... I wait, like D let me, or D? Wait, 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 wait. This, it's, it sounds D. really, Letter really D. familiar. It's that yeah. game that's uh, was loosely based upon that uh, movie Vampire Hunter D, wasn't it? Ah, uh, no, I don't think it was. Because that sounds very familiar. Because remember, remember, you're like I can't remember much about like what the game was about. I, I just remember like individual like just I remember watching my dad play it. So really, <laughs> and yeah, and like I think you, like, you remember like you found like a note. And he, he found like a bowl your of father, blood. Your father, your father's been on a mass boarding spree and barricading himself in the hospital. Laura rushes <laughs> to the scene of the crime, desperate to find the explanation for the well-respected doctor's actions. Upon entering the hospital, she is so horrified at the murdered bodies lying about the halls, she covers her eyes. When she uncovers them again, and the when she uncovers them, she uh, she finds herself in an unknown dark castle. What the fuck? <laughs> Sounds about right. I think there's actually like sequels to it, but I think I only played double I mean, as far as D3, not, the first one. Double D. There was three? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> the double Ds. Uh, I'll look on the Wikipedia page. There's uh, the D series. There's D2. D, Enemy Zero and D2. Yeah. So, I just remember like certain 
parts of that game just like you go into a room and you find like the like dead bodies smashing against the wall and things like that that I don't remember like I don't remember like the details of that game I just remember like as a kid watching that I vividly remember like sitting there with my dad and his friend like watching that and it was like late at night and he was playing that game I'm just scaring the crap out of me yeah. so yeah those would be some of mine um real quick so um uh, Bioshock came out about 2005. That's what I forgot. Yeah. Yep. 2000. Uh, no. 2000. Year 2005. Seven. Right? No, it was. It came out August 2007. Oh, no. Man. Wait. Yes, August 2007. That's a long time ago. Because it was like I, that's one of the first games I got. Yeah, you're right. Halo 3 got beat by Bioshock. Yeah. Because that's one of the first. I like, I think it's like the second or third game I bought with my, my 360. Yeah. Uh, well. Um. Yeah, if you um, had your settings, like your brightness settings down to like the bare ass minimum like it recommends, that game could be really fucking creepy. <laughs> Where you're, so. you're underwater, you're all alone, fucking surrounded by these lunatics, and occasionally you see a big daddy, it's just one of these giant with a fucking drill. And just seeing that come out yeah. of the dark corner could freaking... <laughs> really, any fight with the big daddy was scary. <laughs> uh, a, shot, a shotgun to the chest take out a big daddy. Hmm. Yeah. A shotgun and a lead mine would definitely destroy it. Yeah, well, yeah maybe. Alright, real quick. What was your favorite spell in Bioshock? Or... Don't, don't ask me questions <laughs> from five years ago. <laughs> We talked about this last week. Don't ask me things that happened five years ago, because I won't remember. The one... The fire. There you go. Fire. I use that one a lot. The fire. The one that caused things to burn. Okay, uh... I, 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 he's okay, one. well... How about you, Jack? Okay, for like, what now? <laughs> Bioshock. What was your favorite spell? Or Vigor, or whatever the original? it was called. What, the... Whatever it's called, that's racist. What, the original one, or like, can yeah, I have the do original. something with the reason? Or the original, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, the, my favorite type of like, uh... Yeah, my favorite type of like, uh, thing from, uh... From the Bioshock games and stuff like that, I really love the Murder of Crows. <laughs> from Bioshock Infinite. Because... Right. Good one. The, that the shit was creepy is, as hell. Oh, I know, it's so funny. It, yeah, it was creepy, though, but it was just so funny, just, like, just uh, the lodge, all these random, like, birds and stuff to people. They're just, like, trying to battle them away. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Another one, that, another one that's, left. like, another one that's equally as creepy, but it's, <laughs> like, sw- soon the swarm of hornets. Oh, yeah? Oh. And then you look at your hand, you just see them, like, crawling in and out of your hand. Oh. Yeah, I was like, ugh, that's gross. But all right, I'm I'm just trying to stall the podcast, so. Gotcha. Um, so I guess we're kind of out of. Uh, well, we really flew through those topics. Yeah, I was hoping uh, I was hoping minutes. that would have gone longer. Thirty minutes in the show. That's already, what she said. Know, normally it takes. <laughs> hey, that's that's good for some of us. Like, that's like eight times for knuckles. Well, I do have a little short story I want to talk about, though, before we go on to anything else. That's okay. Okay. Well, today I was playing a little bit of Pokemon, like, uh, X, like I have been for the past couple weeks, while doing errands, and uh, I, I started learning about this thing called, uh, like, uh, chain fishing, right? Now, what chain fishing is inside this uh, particular game, it's it's another form of try to get, like, shiny Pokemon. So what you do, you surf, like, into a particular, like, body of water... You stay there, you don't move from the spot, and uh, you select one of your fishing rods, like an old rod, gold, good rod, super rod, and basically what you do is you, uh, you basically do what you do with, say, fishing and other Pokemon games. You wait until, like, the thing has a bite, press the A button, encounter a Pokemon, but the thing is, you don't necessarily have to battle the Pokemon in order to go to, like, uh, another type of chain, like, say, with, uh, with the Poco Radar or something like that from previous games. No, you can just basically just, like, encounter a Pokemon, just, like, run away from it. So, today I just started doing that, and I started chain, like, chaining, like, uh, particular creatures, and I ended up getting sh- two shiny Pokemon today while I was, nice. uh, thing. One of it was, a uh, one of them was a love disc, <laughs> which, uh, it looks, like, kind of like a blondish type of color, the rare one, and I gave it the nickname of Cassie. 
<laughs> wow. That's, but, that's you kind know, of creepy. No. Shout out. <laughs> but uh, the other one, the other one was really funny because I was listening to the latest episode of Talking Ship podcast, episode 147 and stuff. And uh, while in, whilst in the middle of like listening to them talk about like their video game stuff, I actually encountered another shiny Pokemon, and uh, I caught this Pokemon like after like oh a couple dozen attempts and stuff, and I gave it the nickname of Nerves. <laughs> and basically, what it was is a male horsey. <laughs> nice. So there you I go. Wish, I wish uh, Nerves was on this sh- episode. I'm starting to wish that too because that would just be just freaking hilarious. Just like his, it's his like, what, exact what response, like yeah, but what the fuck's a horsey? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm gonna post a picture of it like on the talking ship thing on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's basically the easiest way I've ever gotten like a shiny Pokemon. That whole chain fishing thing. You guys should try it sometime. I, but, just don't uh, want, I don't want my uh, second uh, shiny Pokemon to be a fish. Well, man, it's up to you, though. But, uh, I mean, I would just recommend just, like, trying it once. You don't need any max repels. You don't need any type of, like, uh, anything special. I mean, you can use whatever type of rod you want. How long you did it take to get that this. shiny? <laughs> you know what it did? <laughs> it took me, like, a better part of, like, an hour, actually. Because, uh... Oh, man, that you know, doesn't seem fun at all. Well, you know what? I was listening to a podcast, too, while I was riding the back of the car, so the, the minutes just, like, just uh, flew by while I was just doing it. So, yeah, the the <laughs> thing is you gotta you gotta make sure not to do is uh, if, say, you lose a Pokemon and stuff, that breaks the chain, so you gotta restart all over again, which I did, like, about four or five times. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Nerves the horsey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't really, we didn't really. I don't think we're really playing on this. I don't think we want to end the episode quite yet. We're like thirty-five minutes in. Yeah. But um, did you guys want to end the show now? We could, um, or we can go on to like some off-the-wall topics. Okay. Well, I mean, we do have other topics. We could. Let's do a couple of topics. Okay. So, okay. Um. Let's talk about, uh... Do you ever really give a shit about Titanfall? Well, yeah, okay, we can talk about Titanfall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that so really wasn't a trailer. Just that, came... is this, that was actually a legitimate question. Do either of you give a shit okay, about Okay, well, we, let's, let's bring it up. Let me, let me, let me, let me go into, let me go into <laughs> the damn, what we're going to talk about. Why we're discussing it. Alright, so last week, they released a new, like, six-minute gameplay trailer. Uh, I posted it in the the show notes, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that watched it, even though they had two weeks to watch it. Um, they they posted a new uh, multiplayer, I guess I guess there's really no single player mode, it's all multiplayer. Uh, new gameplay footage. Um, it looks interesting. Um, I, I, it's kind of hard to talk about because I'm the only one that watched it. But I'll give my opinion on it. Um, I want to like this game, I want to look forward to it, but I'm just not interested and I, I think I'm just I'm kind of done with first person online shooters like this like the Call of Duty the Battlefield like Call of Duty comes out in what less than a week and I am not excited about it whatsoever I'll tell you what man all it takes for you is probably going to be to just try out Titanfall somewhere and you probably will be hooked on it Tyler <laughs> yeah, yeah but I'm but I'm not getting a I'm not, but I'm not getting an Xbox One. I guess it's going on for 360, but I'm not going to buy it for 360 when you have it on the, probably most people that are going to buy it are going to get it for uh, Xbox One. Yeah, if I, I do get it, yeah, it's and I'm going PS4. So I'm I'm not, not getting it for 360 because what's the point of buying a multiplayer only game when most people are probably going to play or get it on Xbox Maybe One? Maybe Steam for not, me, but <laughs> I, I have I just have little interest in this game. But um, also, I guess they they announced just yesterday that Titanfall because there's always been there's been a rumor for a while that Titanfall was, was only a time exclusive that eventually it would come to PS4 you know six months to a year later. But they did announce yesterday that uh, it is a permanent Xbox One and Xbox 360 and Steam exclusive. Or I guess not Steam, but uh, what Origins 
exclusive. Now, where have I heard that before? Um, well, didn't Microsoft do something similar with the original Mass Effect? That, uh... uh well, no, I think there was supposed to be the case, but then EA bought Bioware, so that kind of changed the story. But I guess EA owns uh, Respawn, who's making... Titan oh, no. Which, but... EA doesn't own Respawn. Uh, EA owns the publishing rights to Respawn Entertainment. Yeah. Essentially, they own, but they especially. They oh, no, because that's own. saying, like, Bungie's. Um, that's saying Activision owns Bungie, which isn't the case. Whatever. But still, uh, just going into what we're saying. Uh, do you think this is a. Is this a huge ordeal? Is this going to. Is this the big swing in Xbox? Xbox's favor or Microsoft's favor? Well, if you oh. go back about six years ago, there was a game called Shadowrun. It was essentially yeah. uh, all all it was was a online game. Yeah, I'm and right. uh, it killed that company. Yeah, but we're we're talking about we're not talking about Shadowrun. We're talking about an established. Uh, you know, this is Respawn's first game, but these guys made Call of Duty Four. They made Modern Warfare. They made Modern Warfare Two. This game is hyped up as being one of the biggest launches, one of the biggest games in history. So we're not talking about Shadowrun that was, that had some buzz around it, but we're talking about this is probably one of the most hyped up games in history of video games. This game will sell millions, 10 million copies the first day it's out. Shadowrun never would have had that. They would, I think they were lucky to probably break it. Shadowrun was a good game, so don't talk about that. <laughs> well, I'm just saying though. But you're, you're you're trying to make the point that 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 killed the company. This game will sell millions of copies, even if it, even if it gets thirty out of a hundred on Metacritic. This game is going to sell ten million copies day one. They're going to make their money and then some, and they're going to make another game, probably Titanfall two in 2015. So I don't. I, I think this is a huge. I don't want to say huge. I think it's a big turn towards Xbox because I think a lot of people that go on PS4 were. You know, silently hoping that it'll come come to PS4, but I don't. I think to me it seems like more and more that the Xbox is Xbox One is more of like the everybody I'm talking to that's getting Xbox One is gonna is like talking about oh we're getting Titanfall we're getting kills or not kills or we're getting it's Call of Duty Battlefield Titanfall you know I'm uh, talking to guys you know, people that get the ps 4s a launch they're talking about they're just gonna get any good game that comes out for it Watch Dogs uh, Assassin's Creed Four Killzone you know, think uh, Infamous, uh, Drive Club. You know, I don't know about that game, but I don't. Know, I, I just think that I think this will be a big boost we'll for see, it. Like yeah. the thing about this is, uh, this is the game that's available at launch. That's why people are hot for it. Like it's already been established as a day one game. Like all the what's coming at launch? Titanfall. It's going. Titanfall doesn't come out until March 11th. I thought it was a day one. Uh... No, it comes out March 11th. Did it, what did it get pushed back? It never got pushed back. It's always been spring 2014. Oh, wow. I must be drunk 24-7 then. <laughs> I, I could have yeah. it was a fucking day one game. No, no. They wouldn't come out with the same month as uh, Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty. Eh. So. Oh. No, I, I just... I think... That, I don't think this would be a... I, I could see this being a huge boost for them. At the run out time, I, I, I would... I would Bet that they're going to sell, you know, five hundred thousand to a million units the same you know, week or same month that Titanfall comes out. I I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I just think that I could I wouldn't be surprised that as soon as the new Call of Duty comes out, if Call of Duty Ghost doesn't destroy the franchise or like kind of like I think I feel like Call of Duty Black Ops Two and has done and Marvel for Three have done for me. I, I I can I can see them you know I I think it'll be big at the time. I wouldn't be surprised in six months no one's playing anymore. Or it's not the main game everybody's playing. The Call of, are you talking about Call of Duty right now? Oh, no, it's about Titanfall. Uh, I just think that you know, well, once the wintertime hits, 2014, when the new Call of Duty comes out, everybody's probably going to put that down, pick up Call of Duty. Oh, so, I don't Coast, know. Was, uh, 17, whatever. The, this is probably going to end up in any, like, any other uh, non-Call of Duty, uh, <clears throat> non-Call of Duty uh, shooter. It's gonna have its uh, it's gonna have its peak like at the, at launch, and then uh, it's gonna die down, like probably about, say it comes out in March. March eleventh, I think is the date. I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's March. It's 11th. gonna come out March, and then let's see, March. Well, 
Wow, that, that was loud. Alright, March, April, May, June, July. By August next year, uh, the only people that are going to be playing are the diehard fans. And hopefully, uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully it's good, because, uh, like I said earlier, this is Respawn's, uh, first game. And I do yeah. want to see how well it does. And just yeah, I, I I do I do I want it to be. I'm not saying I want it to be bad, even though I'm going PS4 for the new generation. I think eventually I'll get an Xbox One when there's a price drop. But I I I I, I hope that I hope it does good. I I, I know it will it'll sell well. I hope it comes out positive reviews. I highly doubt it's going to be negative reviews. Um, but I I I don't see this being. The big swing in um you know in momentum towards uh the, the Xbox like the Microsoft maybe wanted to um I I think they're I think they got an audience kind of like how Nintendo has their for with the Wii they had the casual audience it seems like to me that X with Microsoft their big thing now is to get get the uh, I guess the uh, what I, the the Call of Duty guys out there because they got they get the and the battlefield guys, like the first person shooter guys out there, like the sports guys out there, you know, they they got they get the Call of Duty DLC first, the Battlefield DLC first. They're probably, I guess, they're getting Titanfall DLC first because they're the only one getting Titanfall, other than Origins, I guess. Um, I think that's the audience they're going for. Is they're going to go for those guys and the, you know, the Madden players of the world and things like that of that nature. No, what I, I what um, I'd love to see is a Titanfall beat beat the shit out of Call of Duty. I do too. It's kind of you think about it. Every generation we've had that new, like, revolutionary game, like what Xbox we had, the original Xbox we had Halo. Mm-hmm. See, then, personally, I hope Destiny whoops all their asses, but yeah, I won't see. I want to see yeah. Titanfall uh, destroy Call of Duty. Yeah, I, and then, you know we had Call of Duty with with this generation. Then I think I think Titanfall Titanfall could be the next big game of the generation. You could argue. But, you can argue you. It was between Halo and Call of Duty. Well, I think Call of Duty with without without Call a doubt Duty, is yeah. By the, the end of a Call of Duty, like whoop Halo. Well, there's no. I, I think Halo is still very popular, but I think that without with no argument, Call of Duty is the bigger franchise right now. And I, I think I think a Titanfall might be that big new one, but maybe because it's a, you know it might be hard to say because it's uh, exclusive now. But I, I'm with you. I think that. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not saying I'm going to hate this game, but I, I can see. I understand what people. It's one. It's kind of granted it all five for me. I can see what people are hyped up for it, but it's just not my kind of game. And it's hard to say with this podcast. I think all three of us don't really care about Titanfall. You know about oh, how big a deal this is for us. All three of us. I'm actually pretty interested okay. inside Titanfall. And okay. I'll, I'll come from the only, input, only uh, actual uh, PlayStation user is actually well, interested in Xbox exclusive. Well. Let me just give my little points here. It's also PC. I see PC, but this yeah. being I, I see this thing being like a very refreshing type of experience because the main reason why I don't play a lot of the first person shooters, like uh, say the military shooters like Call of Duty or Battlefield and stuff, you do the pretty much the same things. It gets repetitive after a while, like when you're playing the multiplayer modes and stuff like that. When I see Titanfall, when I see the gameplay from that, and I see what uh, you can do. Going into mechs, jumping off of walls, doing all this stuff. It looks like absolutely crazy fun shit. So, yeah. what I really expect from Titanfall, I think that thing's going to be a very big seller when it comes out for the Xbox One in spring 2014. Oh, yeah. As for... There's no question. I'm not, I'm not arguing that with you now. But when it comes like, to actual thing like Call of Duty and stuff like that, I could see it possibly like taking a chunk away from like uh, another, you know, another chunk away from the Call of Duty things. I'm pretty damn sure that Activision will still put out another Call of Duty game like a year from now, and people will buy that up, but uh, I humbly believe that uh, Titanfall has a lot of legs where it's probably going to be still played, even even until, like, uh, the second game from its supposed trilogy that they're going to be putting out. Like, uh, I could still see it being played over Call of Duty, like, even after the main Call of Duty hardcore fans play it for months and then get tired of it and go back to playing Titanfall. You know, I think that's going to be yeah. a very big seller. And as far as like exclusivity and stuff, I look at it this way. Exclusivity did help the Xbox 360 with particular games. I said that the original Mass Effect, but in the beginning, in the beginning. Yeah. but when and it Dan comes Frozen, to, but yeah, 
that also. But when it came to like some of the sequels and stuff, you still had the games coming to the PlayStation 3, games coming to the PC, maybe sometimes to an extent for the Wii, but that was very rare. But uh, yeah. here's the thing here. I know Respawn Raid... I mean, like... <laughs> Res- <laughs> I know Respawn Entertainment, like, has, has went on record as to saying, like, yeah, the first game is exclusive to the Xbox One, but that doesn't say anything else what they're making. So you have possibility of the other Titanfall games, like, in that series, come to the PS4 as well, so... That's a great hey, point, Jack. Jack, real quick, welcome to 2010. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, my mind laughs right there. <laughs> well, no, it's just like that's a great point because like Mass Effect was exclusive to uh, the 360 up until what three four months yeah, ago. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was, it was up until like when that, last uh, year. that game from 2007 till when yeah, it was like around there. No, actually, Mass Effect came out like 2006. Yeah, last year 2007, but no, it no, finally got released came out onto the PSN last year. <laughs> Yeah, it's like the original Mass Effect was like whenever they released that triple pack. Two thousand seven. Yeah, it was two thousand seven, I think, or two thousand eight actually. The original was the original. No, two thousand seven was the original Mass okay. Effect. But yeah, they just released the trilogy pack for PS three like several months, like ago. three four months ago. Yeah, you know, so it was, but it was this year, so I wouldn't be surprised that you know maybe they're saying throughout the life of the PS four, but it wouldn't surprise me towards maybe the end of the life cycle or something. If there's a Titanfall two or Titanfall three. But really, with this game, though, there's no really, there's no big story. There's no your decisions don't matter. There's gonna be no decision making in the game. So the thing know, is, I I believe the reasons that Respawn Entertainment has put in they put in so much effort to this thing. What I don't see it actually tanking. I see this thing actually gaining some interest, moving its ground and stuff. And I guarantee you, we will see some form of Titanfall on the PS4. Not particularly when it launches for the Xbox One. But maybe like in the corresponding years with its various sequels or maybe even bundle packs, yeah. you know. Oh yeah, I, would, I, I bet I bet they, that Microsoft paid a chunk of a good chunk of money to EA and respawn the game. Oh no shit! Titanfall exclusive, but I doubt they've done anything with Titanfall two. And I, they're, you know, even though I bet Titanfall is going to make respawn EA and Microsoft a billion dollars, I, I would bet that they're still like, well, the PS4 is probably going to outsell. The, the Xbox One, at least in the first, I think, six months to a year. So, like, well, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and make this game, Titanfall 2, for PS4. Yeah, you have the year. So, I wouldn't... I, I would bet... I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, in 2015 or whatever, if they, I don't know how often they're going to make these games, but it's eventually... Titanfall 2 will probably be on PS4. But, um... I don't know. Good conversation there, guys. Just add some more time to it. Uh, we can do one... We can do uh, maybe one more topic. Then we'll kind of go into wrap the show up. Um, Xbox, Microsoft has announced that Xbox Game for Gold, which is basically where they give you uh, one free game every two weeks, mm-hmm. um, will, will be is extended indefinitely. Well, we hallelujah. That last week. So, what? No, no we, we didn't. didn't. We, 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 we meant, I, I think I mentioned it briefly, but no, it, uh-huh. it, it, it is, uh, it has been announced, uh, it will be going on indefinitely, so probably, I, I would bet for another six months, two years, it's going to go wait. on. So we're you get, sure because I could swear I made a joke about that. I think you made a joke about it, but we never actually talked oh, about okay. it. So because believe me, I had the show. I had to listen to it three times. <laughs> so, um, and I love you for so, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you better waste so many of my freaking Thursdays and Fridays. Um, anyway, listen to you talk. Ugh. So, anyways, um, to me, I, I'll start off with this one. The the. Uh, Xbox One Game for Gold is a great idea. Mm-hmm. It's it's the you know it's a, the, it's a way to counteract the, the places plus giving away free games, but they have just it's just shocking me with Microsoft the way they'll just throw money at stuff. They will they spend a billion dollars advertising for Connect, but they're gonna get they've been giving us five six year old games that no one really wants to play anymore. We got Crackdown. <laughs> we got Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah. Uh, we got Halo Three. All this which month. were good games. We got, at launch, yeah, yeah, at their time, but five, six years yeah. ago, yeah. And to me, the, to me, I'm just looking at it like this: is I'm just putting places, places plus aside from this, that there was so many great things they could have done with this mm-hmm. thing. I'm just looking back. Saints Row Four we'll came see. out in late August. All right, real quick, You're... can I make my damn yeah, point? No, one second, I'm trying to say something. God. All right, roll. well, PlayStation Plus. You talk about how you're trying to compare it to PlayStation Plus. PlayStation mm-hmm. Plus only recently just got great. Like a year ago. Like at least for the past year, I think, maybe. 
Yeah, but but, but PlayStation but for the first but, couple of years, PlayStation Plus has been bad. Okay, but Sony laid the groundwork of how to make PlayStation Plus great. Yeah. So they had a they were the first ones to do it, and they they kind of blundered at the beginning. They made it great. So Microsoft could easily just like oh they, they made they made they already wrote the blueprint to make make this awesome deal. Was just piggyback off that, and they didn't do it. So to me, it's just like I just look at it like this. Okay, Saints Row Four came out late August. They gave us a free game from the first to the fifteenth of the month and the sixteenth to the rest of the month. How about the first game we got in August, Saints Row Three, to get people hyped to play Saints Row Three and hype people up for that game. I put people for Saints Row Four. Buy Saints Row Four. Then just yesterday, Assassin's Creed Four came out. Why didn't you, for the, the first game, free game we got of uh, October, give us Assassin's Creed Three? Because no one enjoyed or, Assassin's you know, Creed Three. But still, <laughs> people will download it and probably play through it, and or please play it, and I'll hype them up for Assassin's Creed Four. You know, I, I just Grand Theft Auto Five came out just a month ago, the, the latter half of September. First game we should got in September, Grand Theft Auto Four. To me, I, I'm just looking at it like this, I can think of it. I'm not that smart. Like, did did Microsoft not see this? They, like, Grand Theft Auto Four is an older a, game. A lot of money behind that. What they they give away for free. Uh-huh. Okay, but Sony's giving away the same freaking games plus ten other ones every month. They just gave us Assassin's Creed. They gave plus his plus members last month Assassin's Creed Three when the Xbox users got Assassin's Creed Two. Like, I mean, seriously. Like they're giving away games that are a year old. I mean, and plus you know five, six other games every month. Why can't Xbox give us? If they're giving, only giving us two games a month. Give it, you know, I'm not saying we have to get like great games that are six months to a year old every every time. But when there's a when this, the big sequels coming out for that game, the the week the, the the free game before that, put the freaking previous game on there. You know, Just give I, Xbox I, six months. Six months, you'll see those games come out like. You'll see. Well, because they're going to run out of launch titles. Well, just... We're going to get Forza 2 probably next month. <laughs> and then what else do we get? Ma- Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Hey, don't dis, don't dis got... Marvel <laughs> fucking Ultimate Alliance. Okay, it was good six that good, years ago. That, all right, uh, that, then, then in January, we got Undertow. Good today. <laughs> sure. Nope. Uh, then in January, we got Undertow. And then what, what else? What was that? Then we'll get Cameo in, uh, uh, in February. <laughs> then we'll get Dead or Alive 4. No. <laughs> You'll get Dead Alive 4. Then you'll get Elder Scrolls uh, for Oblivion, which, hey, hey, that's not that bad. That would be bad, no. But still, it's like, I, don't, I, I just think this is a, this, it's just a giant blunder. Like, okay, Call of Duty freaking Ghost is coming out next week. They don't have to give us Black Ops 2, but give us freaking Call of Duty 4. Give us another Call of Duty game that way. Oh, oh, I whoa, mean, whoa, even whoa, though, whoa, I guess... whoa, 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 you just stabbed yourself in the ass. Uh, yeah. But you're just bitching about them giving you like five, six year old games. Now you're telling them to give you a. Is for a Call of Duty Ghost to give you a six year old game? <laughs> well, no, I was just saying, example. <laughs> no, idea. so here's my point. Okay, but here's my point though is at least there's a there's a point to freaking giving you that free game is to hype you up for the next Call of Duty. You know, don't just give us a random freaking game of the of the month. Like we got Halo Three this this month. Okay, why? For Halo Spark Because you owned a game? For the, the, the Windows 8 it's game? It's coming out to consoles. That game came out like... What? It is coming to consoles? No. I know that. Yeah. That game... Because no one... Apparently because no one probably bought it on I'm Windows 8. I'm not going to play it on Windows 8. <laughs> well, no. No, I mean, the hell is probably that's what I'm going to do. I'll buy it on the arcade. I'm not going to buy it on the computer. No. No, but that's kind of a point, though, where I was going with it is... Uh, you know, I know I I did say I was playing about this. You know, the six months you give us games that are six years old, but that was the point though. Is if you're gonna give us a six year old game, at least make it relevant to I'm why we're to getting tell it. You, or you know, six give months them. they'll give you these newer games. Okay, but my point is to counteract your point of like, well, it took PlayStation Plus a year to get good. They already made the groundwork. They already knew how to make this thing good, and they yeah, didn't but do it. they didn't have the they don't have the they, all right. I'll give you this. They didn't have the. They didn't put the deals in place from the start. In uh, about six months, you they're going to have those deals put in place where they can give away. You tell me they didn't. They just boy, they just pulled this out like they so they announced right, E3. Well, you're you're telling me they just planned it out like two days before E3. I doubt that, and I doubt it takes them four months to get any good games. Hmm. That's the point. They gave us freaking Fable Three, Assassin's Creed Two, Defend Defense Most Grid? of most of Seriously? which are Microsoft. What, what do you get next month? Well, the Burger King games. I'm going to rage quit. I really am. 
<laughs> I'm gonna break your wit and drive up to fucking Iowa and slit your goddamn throat. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. I'm getting angry. Knuckles is getting angry. It's a good podcast. Okay. Well, you know what? Here's what I personally believe. I believe that to Microsoft, and this is just just random thinking here, I don't think they were really ready just to like try to uh, expand the thing with this whole particular like uh, gold service dealy. I think they may have just may have had the intention of just having it maybe for like around the six months to a year, and that was it. That's probably the main reason why we were getting like uh, the gamers were getting think, games like Assassin's Creed 2, Halo 3, Real quick, like Jack. Fable something. Yeah? I got a little uh, Halloween uh, segue to this. Talking about talking about uh, shitty uh, deals. Yeah. Shitty movies. I just got... I'm on Facebook right now looking for shoutouts. Yeah. And uh, this girl I went to high school with posted that she was watching Halloween 3. Oh. <laughs> Ew. No. <laughs> That's a terrible movie. <laughs> Did you ask this person why they hate you? <laughs> oh, it's a I'm going poor, to right poor now. Girl. Yeah, poor it is a girl. girl my house. But goddamn, <laughs> Halloween three, really? Seasons of the Witch. Goddamn, man, really? Ugh. <laughs> that Ugh. is just funny. Oh man. But yet, you know, I'm kind of in agreement with Ginger Boy itself. Just give it like an, well, uh, either, what was it, Ginger Boy or Knuckles or something like that? that uh, Knuckles. Probably said, oh, just give it another like six months or something to a year. It'll probably get progressively like better I'll and stuff. I'll say in six months, it, the, you'll be getting games like... Uh, from four from years ago? <laughs> right now. You'll be getting games around the... I could see that happening. Yeah, I could. You'll probably be getting Saints Row 4 next year or... In about six months, so. But yeah, I'm not, I mean, after what, after I'm not that, saying you, give us. But you'll be on your PS4, so why do you give a damn? <laughs> well, no, that's just my point, though. Is like why challenge my my argument is a why try to challenge Sony's PS PlayStation Plus when you're gonna half-ass it. The, I believe mm. that they're trying to get back to their core audience. They're not doing a very good no, job. No, they're not. I'll give you that. No, three three dollar games I can literally buy for a dollar on Amazon right now. Which game could you buy for a dollar? Friggin' Crackdown? <laughs> Crackdown was like 69 cents. Ah, <laughs> that's a <laughs> I think Assassin's Creed 2 is like a dollar seventy. You know what's funny? So. You know what game was pretty fun that kind of similar to Crackdown, but yeah, you could just probably just uh, get a lot better mileage out of it. Probably Saints Row 4. <laughs> Actually, no, that game dropped like a... That, that game dropped bad. <laughs> it went from $60 to $40 from like two weeks. Wow. Well, they probably did it just because Grand Theft Auto Five was coming out soon, so they wanted to challenge them, maybe stay them. But no, most games, a lot of games do that, though. You'll see a lot of games come out, and then two, three weeks later, they're you know, 50 to $40. I, what I would love to see in about six months, Payday 2. That yes. would be pretty awesome, because that's, that's a game I've always been interested in, just you know, none of my friends are playing it. So right. If that came out soon, I would be very happy about that. But If... I because I'm not getting rid of because when I get a PlayStation Four, probably in January or February, I'm not gonna get. I'm keeping my 360 because I got like 150 games on my freaking on my hard drive. Yeah, I'm keeping my and 360. I, I'm gonna sell my PS3 in this games. So I'm probably gonna make a my 360 game collection down too because I know so right now yeah. I'm only playing GTA Five and uh, watching Netflix. Yeah. Well, to me, like they're, they're, most of the games I do have, like Mass Effect and the Dragon, yeah, Age, it, like Gears of Wars. But the rest of the games I got, like they're just not worth anything. Like you, like they're not even worth the gas to drive down yeah. there trading. Like it's not worth it. But no, it's kind. Of, I, um, I, I want to see can... what the GameStop uh, associate looks, looks like. Uh, looks when I show him Mag for the PS3. <laughs> did you already try that once? And they said, yeah, no? I did. <laughs> Because the servers aren't yeah, the on. servers aren't available, and it's like okay, whatever. Oh my god! They, oh man, that I game was actually sorry. really good. It's like it's just whenever the PS that PlayStation Network went down, they should gave us that game for if free. They, yeah, yeah. If they would give us that game, that those that that company would still be around. Yeah, that's true. Matt, we might be getting mad too. No, <laughs> we might be. You never know. If they, if they if they would give the game away for free, but uh, I guess um, we'll kind of go towards the end of the show now. Um, 
So uh, to end it off, uh, Extra Life is this weekend. Uh, hopefully this show will be out before Extra Life. It's this Saturday. Uh, we are going to be playing games 25 straight hours. Uh, you, you've if heard this if feel, everything gets feel. edited on time, this show will, this show will go out. Uh, well, I always edit. I always edit the day. Yeah, after, well, so it's like today's Wednesday, so it should be. You should have it Thursday night. Okay, well, I'll have it put up uh, right as I'm about to start my extra life campaign. So once you once you hear okay. this, feel free to hop on Xbox and uh, give me a game invite, and I'll play a few games with you. Yeah. Uh, same here. I'll probably, we'll probably be on Xbox all day. Um, but uh, Knuckles and I did make a bet during Extra Life that we will be trying to give me gamer score, uh, give me as uh, points as we can throughout the throughout the marathon, and the, whoever gets the most wins. But we decided what the losers are gonna have to do. Oh, did we now? Because I I see several yes. options, which I, one of my kind yeah, of but like. we're not we're not doing. I'm not doing Cassies. I'm not buying her Lucky Cass. But I ain't spending three hundred dollars on you on a three DS. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Knuckles will either on a three DS and Pokemon. Well, I, it's, a, it's a two to one agreement, so it's like Gay or Jack likes it and I liked it. And... Okay, well I'm out. I'm out of the bet then. So uh, all right, go ahead. No, so the I think the bet we did agree on. Uh, you I liked did. it, and I, I I said it. So it's we we, we can do both. Um, no, we're gonna do we're gonna do this one because it's my idea and it's awesome. <laughs> It's affordable. I think we can both do it. Uh, but the loser will have to take a shot of hobo whiskey, aka Fireball whiskey, uh, during episode 22. Throughout the show, let's we'll take one shot for every 200 points we lose by. What? Oh man. Yep. So for every 200 achievement points that say I lost by a thousand achievement points, I gotta take five shots during episode 22. Throughout the show. <laughs> oh, it's a recurring joke again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that will be uh, Knuckles. Are we in agreement to that that bet? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll accept that bet. Okay. I mean, two hundred points that we lose the the loser. I guess loses. Check by. check Facebook real quick. The... Oh shit! But uh. Uh, I've also looked at your gamer score, and you haven't really gotten any achievements since yesterday, right? Yeah, I got a 10 point achievement. I, I have purposely been resisting playing Assassin's Creed 4 for this bet. Okay, well, uh, well I've looked at your. Um... Ah, crap. Open up, open up the document. It's like I'm like 66,086. Like I've actually, uh, I actually marked it down trying to. Okay. Like I've looked at because uh, the agreement last week was uh, I couldn't play any game that you had over seven hundred gamer score already in. Mm-hmm. Which isn't very which many. Which isn't very many. Yeah, I looked. It was like five. <laughs> like basically, mad any mad any games, any football so game which I wasn't going to play. Sports games and uh, Mass Effect games. Yeah, which is sad because Mass Effect Three is actually and Dragon Age games. Yeah, it was sad because Mass Effect Three and Dragon Age Two are my were on my list. Yeah. And Jack said so, real quick about the bet. Well, you know what? That's really bonerific. <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't have I don't have I don't have I don't have a bottle in front of Oh well. <laughs> or a shot to it. But uh that was a callback, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah it was. Um <laughs> uh, let's see. It's like open episode the, like eight. Open up the damn document. Okay. Here's the list. Uh, Mass Effect 3, which I was going to do. Far Cry 3, which, fuck yeah, I don't care. NCAA uh, 13. Oh, man. Borderlands, <laughs> which was kind of on my list. Because I was trying to, I was going to try to get a play date going in that game. Yeah. Uh, and Dragon Age 2. I don't know if I should be more ashamed that you only have, like, that many uh, 700 games, or you. Took three. I have more than that. The rest of them are football games. <laughs> yeah, but I have Mass Effect Two. I have over a thousand. Okay, well, yeah, I didn't mark off Mass Effect Two because uh, I already have a completed game in that. Okay. Yeah. No. Well, I don't. I don't. You know, a lot of games. I don't really do a big team hunting anymore. I haven't done it in the last few years. So I used to, as you'll see by all my all right. All and my going games going back to her, the girl watching Halloween Three. Her excuse is, I like older scary movies. Well, then watch like a good one, like The Shining. 
Or Halloween or 1. Children of the Corn. Children of the Corn. Oh, my God. That's that's what we did talk about. I, I don't think so, I've actually seen that. They just watch the first one. Then pretend the other ones didn't exist. Oh, and here's a here's but, one. Here's a just real quick. Here's a good one. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> nice. Um. Okay. So I guess we can go into our kind of the wrap up the show here. We'll go into our shout outs. Uh. We'll start with uh Knuckles random Twitter follower. Of the well, week. I think we should start off with the actual shout out we have. Okay. We can start off. With, okay. I was going to show with that one. But uh, Jason Simmons, uh, we did post on Facebook asking if anybody wanted a Twitter shout out, and he did say he wanted one. We posted so, on uh, Facebook if, for people who wanted a Twitter shout out. <laughs> that was, that was just yeah. <laughs> hey, it's the twenty first episode, man. I've been drinking for a little. You while. drink every so I, episode. I just, That's not an excuse. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't drink for episode seventeen, four, and uh, three. Liar. So. <laughs> whatever you know what I meant Jason there's your shout out buddy um, so we'll go into uh, you've had enough time to stall so go into your random twitter follower of the week uh, insert uh, Halloween mu- the Halloween theme <laughs> I'm, I'm probably not going to oh, come that. on <laughs> I, already, I already got my background music set up for this show uh, let's see. Random Twitter follower of the week. Not doing the actor. That's... <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Whoa. Uh, stop. <laughs> Glory and listen. Ice is back with a brand new edition. Uh, she's over at Big Red Barrel. Uh, Candid Cassandra. Also known as Twitter's Candace hates you. Oh, Candace! Hey. Yeah. Uh, she's a female. And I don't. Hi, hi, hi. Huh, I don't know anything <laughs> else about her. And uh, she's over at Big Red Barrel. That is the random Twitter follower of the week. I can't believe this actually became a segment. So. <laughs> <laughs> you do it once. I'm gonna make it a a thing. I'm so glad the random video game facts hasn't made it back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that was a weekly thing for one whole week. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> Actually, no, for two because I brought up that Pokemon episode. Oh, That's right. Oh, yeah. All right, so uh, let's go into uh, Jack's uh, random rest of Real the quick, week. Real random, quick, random video game fact of the week. The reason why Pokemon Green didn't get pushed over... To America was because of all the glitches that were in it. So they re they brought out red and then they uh, remade uh, green and called it blue in America. Yep. Wow. There you go. There's your video game fact. It's not too far off. <laughs> all right. Well, to go inside the random like wrestler of the week. I decided to just uh, do a specific type of gimmick from a particular wrestler that a lot of us probably know pretty well. His name is Dustin Rhodes. Oh, AKA man, I was Gold really Dust. hoping you were going to do Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, that would have been fun, wouldn't it? But no, I decided because of the spirit of Halloween, we are going to speak about a gimmick that uh, Dustin Rhodes had for maybe like a better short of like a week or two because of how horrible it was. Apparently, in WCW, he had this character by the name of Seven. Well, what Seven was... What's in the box? (laughs) What Seven was, he was... He was portrayed as pretty much like WCW's kind of version of The Undertaker, kind of. Where he had this particular promo, and I remember vividly watching this promo, like, growing up. It was basically him outside of a child's window. The child's, like, resting in bed... Right, you see his image like right to the window, and it was it was probably one of those creepiest things that you uh, probably could see. And what happened was there were so many complaints by parents because it looked like he was like a child predator. <laughs> that, and then uh, week after that, gold dust. The week after the week after that, no, this is back in WCW. This had nothing yeah, to do was, with gold dust inside that time. But I swear, gold dust week, was uh, in WCW. Yeah. Yeah, Dustin Rhodes was in WCW for a time before he came back. Well, I meant the Gold Dust gimmick. 
Well, the Goldust gimmick never went inside WCW. It stayed predominantly in WWF, but... But uh-huh. anyway, a week after that, he debuted, and uh, pretty much they gave him this whole spiel and stuff. And then he gets on the microphone, it's like, he tries to get into character, then all of a sudden he just looks like, I, I can't continue going on with this shit. And he just tears off his entire and stuff like that. They've been having me do with these stupid gimmick characters and all that stuff. But, uh, basically that's the character of the week. This <laughs> Dustin Rhodes little gimmick here of uh, Seven, you know, the freaking old mysterious Undertaker-like child predator type of gimmick that he had. <laughs> that was so hilariously bad, it's scary. Very nice, very nice. Um, I guess that'll wrap us up for the week, guys. Uh, I've been Ginger Boy. I guess I've been Knuckles. With no quitty uh, remark. <laughs> and I've been the Jack of Hearts. Trader Vicks.